Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you Believe Me If All Those Endearing Young Charms. <laughs> This tune is a request for Pearl and she pointed out that when I did recently the song Come On Eileen I omitted to play the bit of this tune, believe me, if all those are hearing new charms which appears at the beginning and at the end of some of the recorded versions of that song. Um, so I'm going to rectify that. So I'm going to show you two versions, uh, one in the key of F which is the same as on that Come On Eileen uh, although, in fact, they only play the first uh, eight bars or so of that. And then a more fiddle-friendly key of D. So this song, it's an Irish uh, kind of traditional song. Um, it was written by the Irish poet Thomas Moore, or rather he put the words to it, in 1808. Uh, and he used a, an 18th century Irish tune, um, which is considerably older. Um, but I, this is not a tune that is widely played among traditional musicians, but it is, I think, popular as kind of a parlour tune. It would be good played at a wedding or as background music or on a harp or that kind of uh, situation. Um, because of its um, slightly staid nature, uh, this was sent up uh, heavily by Looney Tunes in various uh, cartoons. And whenever you saw a, a duck or a, uh, <laughs> a mouse or anyone sitting down at an instrument to play um, Believe Me If All Those Endearing Young Charms, then you would know that something bad was going to happen. And in fact, what was going to happen was that when a certain note of this tune was played, then there would be a, uh, <laughs> an explosion. Um, which kind of, once you've got that uh, embedded in your head, it kind of changes your relationship with this tune completely. And heaven forbid that that should happen at all in this video, but you never know. Just keep an eye on that music and watch out for the, the possible uh, note that I should be avoiding. Anyway, uh, let's start off with the, uh, the, the version in F. Um, there's not much to say about how to play it. Um, I will play it simply and without ornamentation to start with on the F version um, and uh, when we come to the D version I'll put a bit of ornamentation in. asking me about vibrato, how to do it and when to do it and uh, I'm certainly not really the person to explain how to do vibrato because I was never really taught it properly um, but I would, I would say with this it's a good tune for vibrato but I wouldn't do it all the time my approach is generally that you do it on a long note and you do it in the second half of the note so that the note has a shape uh, so just watch again how I play the first line. Notice for that uh, last note I went up to third position just in order to be able to do a good vibrato but I started the note with none and then brought it in towards the end. 
and uh, you will never get a good vibrato, or I will never get a good vibrato with my fourth finger. Um, so if I, if I want a vibrato, then the second finger is usually the one to go for in that kind of situation. Okay, now let's look at the version in D, which is considerably simpler for the fiddle. I'll play it once through um, without ornamentation, and then I'll just look at a few ornaments you can put in. One, two, three, two, two. <laughs> Okay, now let's go through and uh, just pick out a few possible ornaments we can put in. Uh, there's quite a few places where you could do uh, open string drones, but I wouldn't do this a lot, just occasionally. So because it's in the key of D, then uh, most of the melody notes on the D string you can put an A drone above. When you get to the G chord, put a D drone below those notes. There's an A drone. You, um, if you play all the way through with drones then it's going to sound like an old timey thing and you, you don't really want that. Uh, now there's lots of room for um, cuts and rolls. Okay, there's a good place for a roll. And also uh, a hammer on on the F sharp, the second finger. Another hammer on. Another nice roll on there. Double cuts. Another roll. And I have videos about the the cuts, the roll, and about droning as well. So uh, check those out if you're not familiar with how to add them. What's great about ornamentation is that it makes it interesting for you. Um, you can play it differently every time, just in a subtle way. It makes it interesting for the audience who know what's going to come uh, generally, but not specifically as to the exact notes you're going to play, which makes it more interesting and it makes it more expressive. So um, this is something that you can develop with your playing. Um, having started this tune, it's almost a beginner's tune, um, but you can work and work and work on this and it'll get better and better as you add more ornamentation and more expression. So a good tune to work on. Uh, I'm going to finish off with um, playing this with the backing and with uh, some ornamentation. If you'd like a copy of the sheet music then do subscribe and send me an email and I'd be very grateful if you'd consider um, supporting me on Patreon, where there's uh, lots more uh, videos, which are private videos, and uh, lots of benefits, including all my PDFs, all my backing tracks, all my tune collections, and so on, available to my patrons. So, I look forward to seeing you soon, and let's hope that that uh, Looney Tunes situation doesn't <laughs> occur. <laughs>